Good afternoon everybody, this is Pastor David coming to you from Mount Pleasant. It is a beautiful day up here uh, in autumn, fall, wonderful. I was going to say cool, but it's not really cool today. It's comfortable, it's a little bit warm, but uh, wow, we'll take it, right? Uh, nice little fall breeze and just, uh, just I love the fall, I love the weather. It's, it's a beautiful day up here in Mount Pleasant and coming to you from our office here. And uh, we're just, just so thankful to be able to come visit you at the middle of your week. And I appreciate Ken helping us with that each week, taking his time just voluntarily to come and, and donate and, and uh, bring that to the altar of the Lord as he serves the Lord. As so many of you in our church, there are so many things that you do to serve the Lord. And you use what God has given you to be a blessing to others. And thank you for that. That's, uh, that's the way church is supposed to be. And uh, we're just talking today about how encouraged I am about our church about um, just every service is is just so helpful and God is just doing a work every Sunday as we meet together and then the other times we're able to be together as a family uh, I'm just excited about our church and I thank you for joining us today I thank you for tuning in and being a part even if maybe you're not with us on Sundays you can join us through this uh, means of video and I just want you to feel uh, welcome, feel a part of the family. We'll, we'll adopt you if that's okay. And uh, just welcome you here to our hearts and, and as we come before the Lord as a church family and, and serve Him. So today I want to mention a couple things. Uh, we had a great day Sunday. We started a new series. This is it. It's called Back to Basics. And we're talking we're kind of a sports theme, a little bit of a football theme. As a coach, which I have been for many years, uh, I, I miss coaching greatly. It was a big part of my life. And and as a coach, one that exhorts and encourages, and and um, uh, I, I really feel like this is kind of a message where I can coach the church a little bit. And we're talking about back to basics. How do we succeed? And uh, Sunday was our first. We talked about salvation and sin and forgiveness. And then to this coming Sunday, we're going to talk about prayer and Bible study and church and some some real basics. And you know, I, I think about. Uh, football teams and, and the Panthers and other teams and I watch them and, and I'm interested and involved in teams that win are the teams that make the least mistakes and the teams that go back to the basics and execute better than everybody else. They execute. They don't make mistakes. They take care of the ball. They, they block. They tackle. They do the basic things. They don't take shortcuts and they work hard at doing the, the, the basics. That's how it is as a Christian. If we're not able to execute the, the basics in our Christian life you know, prayer, and I'll be talking about that this week, Bible study and church attendance, and, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. And then week three, we're going to talk about fear and doubts, and, and those are things that can be enemies to us and, and can enter into your life and destroy you and defeat you and even fight against that. Fear and doubts and trust. Sometimes we have trouble with trust, and, and so we want to talk about that. Week four will be spiritual gifts, giving, and sharing as we continue to progress through the basics and the fundamentals. And number five, we'll talk about the reliability of the Christian faith. And I'm real excited about that. Kind of a, a series on back to basics. And I hope you're going to enjoy it. I know I am. And just looking at some of the other things, uh, I was looking through our prayer list earlier today. I want to encourage you to, to pray. Uh, so many wonderful things going on in church. And uh, many people, I know last week we had a new baby, Gosha. And Michael Howie and Bella, they welcomed a new baby, um, baby Joanna Rose. Everything's good. And then we have uh, Kayla Peeler this week is in the hospital, had some surgery, and just wants you to keep praying for her. Many others who are at home or recovering or uh, just getting stronger and, and having healing in their life. And we're thankful for that. I have an activity this Saturday that I want to encourage you about. This is our fall family cookout. It's going to be held at Camp Spencer. Uh, which is in Concord. It will be Saturday from 3 to 7. And there's not a, a very simple activity. Just a lot, a lot of just come. We'll eat. We'll cook out there. We'll provide the food for you. Bring your family. There's a great, beautiful park. There's ponds if you want to go fishing. There's hiking trails. There's games for the kids. Just a place for the family to be together and enjoy this weather. It's going to be cool this Saturday. It's going to be beautiful. And uh, I just want to encourage you to come. 3 to 7. Uh, Camp Spencer for our family cookout, and and I hope you'll keep your bulletin with you. Lots of other neat things going on, and and um, I, I want to just want to communicate well with you as a church. God gave me some some things back uh, a couple months ago when we were were when we were having to relocate as far as the location of our worship. 
and the Lord opened the door for us to be at Mount Pleasant Elementary School, which is a wonderful temporary location. We have access to that as long as we need it, which is wonderful. I love the, the cafeteria with the stage and the everything and the lighting and and uh, the sound and all that. It's just a great location. Our church continues to grow as we're meeting there. And, and during that time of transition, the Lord gave me several passages to encourage me. And I want to pass those on to you. One today is out of the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. And it's a, there's an amazing dynamic here in Joshua chapter 1. If you've never read the book of Joshua, I would encourage you to do it. It's a great story. So let me break down the first ten verses for you briefly. We'll just walk through these verses, and I think it will be an encouragement to you. All right? Joshua chapter 1. Uh, the first thing we see in Joshua chapter 1, we, we see the people involved in the story. The people. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, or servant, or attendant, or assistant, saying. So the people involved in this story, there's Moses and there's Joshua. There's Moses, this incredible uh, iconic leader for all the children of God and, and Moses is the anointed leader and he has had an assistant these years and, and he's been his helper and his his uh, right hand man so to speak so that's that's the characters in the story and so we see that in verse 1 now verse 2 number 1 verse 1 we saw the people there's Joshua and there's Moses now verse 2 we see there's a problem in verse 2 Moses my servant is dead alright now, now get this Get this in your mind. Get this uh, this backdrop in your mind. Here's Moses, the, the leader, everyone's hero. He's seasoned. He's white-haired. He's he he is. Everyone looks to Moses, this iconic character for leadership. Well, his time is done. His time is passed here on earth, and Moses is dead. Have you ever lost somebody in your life that's been really special that you just uh, you don't worship them, but you really look to them, and you look to them for leadership, and you follow. There's a whole nation of people that were following Moses. Moses was God's man, and and Moses had passed. His ser Moses, my servant, is dead. Verse 2, Now therefore arise, go up over this Jordan, thou, you, Joshua, and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even in, even the children of Israel. Uh, this is a strategic time in the life of Israel and the children of Israel, God's people. They're moving forward. God is leading them through Moses, but Moses is gone. So we have a challenge. We have a problem. So verse 1, the people. Verse 2, the problem. Verse 3, the promise. I want you to I want you to listen to verse three. Maybe you need a promise today. Well, here's a good one. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. God is talking to Joshua. Joshua is probably overwhelmed, intimidated, scared, frightened at taking the position of such a great man like Moses. Joshua's like, I can't, I can't do this. I'm not ready for this, God. And, jo and God is speaking to Joshua in verse 3, and he says, Joshua, I want you to, be, I want you to take courage. And, and, and so if you're listening today, and you're in a situation, and there's a change in your life, a job, a, a family, a responsibility, something new in your life, and you're, you're afraid, you're concerned, Listen to this. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Everything I promised Moses, I give you the same promise. And Joshua's like, wow, I'm not Moses. I can't fill his shoes. And God said, Joshua, you don't have to wear Moses' shoes. You wear your shoes. You don't have to be somebody else. You be you. Because who God has made you is enough. So once you see the people, the problem, the promise, in verse 4, the places. Look at all these places that God has promised for Joshua. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And I wish you had a map. You can, you can get a map and look at all these places that God has promised Joshua and the children of Israel. All the land of the Hittites unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Joshua. I'm promising you all this land. So we see the per people, the problem, the promise, the places. 
And look at verse 5. We see this pledge. Why don't you look at verse 5? And, and, and I, I want to personalize this for me and for you. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Joshua, no man can stand against you because you're representing me. The one and only God. You're my man. And so, do not be intimidated. Do not be afraid. Do not be uh, pushed around. Because there's not any man going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, and you know I was with Moses. Moses was my anointed, my leader, my man. So I will be with you, Joshua. I will not fail thee, nor forsake you. Joshua, you can count on me. I'm the God of Moses. I made Moses who he was. Now Moses is gone, and you're my guy. Joshua, step up. What is it in your life today that you need to apply? Is it a new job? Is it a new responsibility, a new parent, a new relationship, a new position God has placed you and prodded you into? It's okay. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Don't be scared. God said, you're my man. I will stand with you, beside you. All the days of your life, I will anoint you to do what I've called you to do. How do you think that made Joshua feel? Wow. How would that make you feel? Number six, verse six, here's God's plan. The people, the problem, the promise, the places, the pledge, and verse six gives us God's plan. Here it is, verse six. Be strong. Be strong and of good courage. God is saying this to Joshua and to me and to you. Be strong. Take courage. He's coaching him. He's helping him. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance this land, which I swear unto your fathers to give them. I have promised these people this land, and I'm giving it to them, and I'm giving it to you to lead them and to give it to deliver it to That's the plan. That's the plan of God. God has a plan for you. Open this book. Follow God's plan. Take courage. Be strong. Verse 7. We see verse, verse 7 gives us the preparation that God gives Joshua. Only be thou strong and very courageous. He says it again. Back to back verses. Maybe God wants you to know. Be strong. Be tough. Don't lay down and quit when you're defeated, when you're knocked down. That's not the end. You have a bad day. Be strong. Take courage. Verse 7 that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Now, very important. He said, Here, here's, here's the preparation. Be strong and take courage that you obey all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand to the left hand so that you may prosper. Go back to the book. Back to basics. Go back to the Bible, the directions, the instructions God's given you. Don't be distracted. There's stuff going on over here in your life. There's bright lights and distractions over here on your left. Stay focused on the things that really matter. The law. Number eight, we see the premise. Here's, here's the foundation in verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night. The Bible, God's Word. You think about it. You meditate it. You read it. You listen. You go to church. You read. You grow. This is the secret to success. Thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written here. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous. You want, a, you want success? Here it is. It's in the book. You want to be successful and prosper? And then shalt thou have good success. God promises Joshua success. But you've got to stay with the plan, which is in the book. All right, number nine. Here's, here's the, the, the ninth verse gives us the presence. All right, we got the people, the problem, the promise, the places, the pledge, the plan, the preparation, the premise, and the presence. Verse 9, have not I commanded you? He questions Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. Again, third time. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you, whithersoever you go. 
say, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm in a bad place. I, I'm in a bad situation at work. I'm in a bad situation with at home. I'm in, you don't understand. No. God says, Joshua, there are going to be tough times. There are going to be challenges. But don't be afraid because I promise you my presence. God will be with you today, wherever you are. And let me wrap it up in verse 10. Verse 10, we see the progress. This is the last one. Verse 10 says this, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people. And, and here's what that means. Joshua listened, and he got God's word, and he got these promises, and he was, Take courage and be strong. I'm with you. I got you, Joshua. In verse 10, you know what he did? He got up, and he started to lead the people. And that's exciting. And you have a choice today. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with this day? How are you going to handle the adversity that has come into your life? The distractions, the challenges, the fears arise. Get up. Take heart. Be courageous. God's presence is with you wherever you go. Church, we have a bright future. We'll have challenges along the way. You know, we had to vacate our warm, fuzzy barn that we loved. We're in a new location. That's okay. There'll be another location. There'll be other challenges. There'll be other rivers to cross. But God said, don't worry, church. I got you. I will stand with you wherever you go. Whatever you need to apply that to today, I give you this promise from God's Word. Lord, Thank you for this truth that you are with us. Your power, your safety, your direction. Lord, thank you for helping Joshua to step up and be the man you called him to be. Help us today to be what you've called us to be. And take courage. Thank you for victory that is already won. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. I hope to see you Sunday. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you.